Season 2 of Modern Warfare 3 is here and so I got y'all the new best settings that's gonna help you pop off in Warzone, Multiplayer, Ranked Play, Zombies, doesn't matter the mode you're playing, these settings will be meta for you. Which to add credibility to my name, this is my full time job and the better I do on games, the more money I make and so I need to have the best settings so I can pay my bills. Okay ladies and gents, I'm gonna be going over every single setting besides the keybinds for the keyboard and mouse just because I do use a controller, which the controller I use is the Xbox Elite V2. I absolutely love this controller because the paddles fit very nicely in my hand, which the reason players use paddles is so then they actually can have these buttons on the back, making it so you can have good aim while you're jump shotting or trying to drop shot. If you don't have paddles, then you have to use your thumb to click the jump button or the lay down button, but then you can't aim at the same time, and so it makes it a little bit hard to do both. If you don't have paddles or you can't afford it, then what you could do is actually play claw. I used to do this for years. I would use my pointer finger to hit the lay down button or the jump button, basically all these buttons I would use my pointer finger for so then I can still have good aim and then be able to do the advanced movement. If you don't want to do either of those, you actually can change your button layout. What you can do is uh, switch it to tactical. When you have it on here, now you can actually lay down drop shot with the clicking down the right stick. Bumper ping is off. Flip the bumpers with the triggers. This is pretty helpful for me. I don't need to do this because I have trigger locks. I can just pull down this by like a millimeter and it's going to fire my gun. If you don't have a fancy controller, you got to pull down the trigger all the way, which there's a little bit of a delay. If you use the bumpers, you're just clicking a button so there's no delay at all. For the stick layout preset, just have that on default. Controller vibration, if you play with this on, make sure you turn that off. It's going to make it be a little bit weird at first, but less things vibrating in your hand in the gunfight will make it so you actually have better aim. Again, a little bit weird at first, but after like two weeks, you get used to it. Dead zone inputs. This is so important. People don't realize how important this is. So for the left stick min, this one doesn't really matter too much. Just have that at one unless you have crazy stick drift if your guy's moving forward by himself increase this until he stops moving for the left stick max so if you have this on 100 you then have to move the middle of the joystick to the end to get to max movement speed if you have this on 75 you only need to move it to right about here to get to max movement speed so basically if you have it on 75 you can move a little bit quicker it's kind of like your guy has a better reaction time you could even do 65 anything below that is a little bit awkward most of the pros keep it between 65 and 75 for me, I like it on 75. Right stick min. So if you have a brand new controller, you can have it on like zero. Although you might like overcompensate for recoil at times. And so even though I can have like a brand new controller, I'll have it on five. It makes it so I can control recoil a little bit better. Some players even have it on 10, but that's like very few players. That's if you have like an insane stick drift and you're not the best at control and recoil that can actually help you. But most players watching, if you don't have any stick drift, five should be good. And again, that's not just so like, you know, it makes it so your screen stops like moving by itself. That's going to make it so you can control recoil a little bit better. If it's anything lower, you sometimes like overcompensate on the recoil. Right stick max, have that 99. Left trigger and right trigger, make sure that's on zero. That's just going to make it so you're like your gun fires the second you hit the trigger. And then that's going to wrap it up for the controller settings for the aiming. So a lot of players or a lot of good players don't have the sensitivity for their aim. It's for their centering. When you're moving around the map, you have a white dot in the center of your screen. You need to make sure that is always where an enemy could be so then all you have to do is like aim in and then fire your gun if it's like off center then you have to aim in then drag over to the target if you have good centering you just aim in and start firing so if you have a lower sensitivity that's going to make it so you can have a more consistent centering yes you can center good on the higher sensitivities but you'll be more consistent if you're on the lower ones which is why all the pros play on like four to seven i think some of them play on 10 and so i'll just mess around with all these and find the one that you like most players including myself really like six this game is a little bit more fast paced and there's more things to center on and so i just noticed i'm way more accurate when i'm on six and then for the ads sensitivity multiplier most players keep it on like 0.85 to 1.0 you just gotta mess around and find the one you like you can go into a private match against bots and then just mess around and keep on playing until you find the sensitivity that you like a lot of players will overthink this you can kind of get used to any center i mean any sensitivity in the game it's just like how consistent you want to be and so just you know you use like these settings and just play with them don't really overthink it sensitivity multiplier i just keep everything on default over here vertical aim axis just default tactical stance multiplier uh, 1.0 that doesn't really matter aim response curve type dynamic is very crucial basically makes it so if you see two targets in front of you you see you snap onto one you kill that guy you want to snap onto the other it's going to make it a little bit easier and stickier on the character like easier to transition target to target and then it slows down more on the target a little bit hard to explain but just over 
overall there's a reason why all the good players run dynamic ads sense multiplier focus 1.0 sensitivity transition timing instant off aim assist target on obviously on what i like to do is go into a private match play against bots with no aim assist get like 100 kills then i'll turn on aim assist and see if uh then you'll just basically see that you have way better aim aim assist type default you could also use black ops black ops used to be the best like two years ago or a year ago but then they nerfed it and so now black ops is basically the same as default a lot of pro players play on black ops and a lot of pro players play on default you got to use them both and just use the one that you do best with again don't really overthink it doesn't really matter too much and the third person ADS correction assist motion sensor behavior off and then that's going to wrap it up for the aiming settings now for the gameplay so a lot of pro players actually don't have this on because it's banned in the CDL because it's a little bit overpowered a little bit cheesy to have your automatic tactical sprint on which is why I use it and it can save your left stick from always having to click down that and so most players just like the automatic tactical sprint slide maintain sprint on auto move forward off oh yeah this one turned off in season one update and a lot of people didn't realize that so just make sure that is on on that is very important tactical stance sprint behavior single tap sprint grounded mantle and then the other two mantles make sure these are on off it's going to make it so you don't accidentally mantle on things you're just going to be more like purposeful around the map you're not going to be accidentally doing as many things or the slide slash dive behavior very very important so if you have it on tap to slide which is default it's going to make it so you can tap the slide then hold the dolphin dive but the game doesn't know if you're tapping or if you're holding so there's a little bit of a delay if you have it on slide only it knows that you're not going to hold for the dolphin dive so it's going to make you immediately slide making the slide cancel in this game kind of feel like modern warfare 2019 seriously go into the firing range with tap to slide then go into the firing range with the slide only you're going to notice a dramatic difference it is insane given sometimes you still dive when you have dolphin dive disabled very annoying i hope they fix that plunging underwater free parachute automatic behavior off sprinting door bash on ledge climb behavior mantle only adsi behavior hold change zoom activation sprint slash uh, tactical sprint doesn't really matter equipment behavior hold weapon mount activation ads plus melee weapon mount exit delay off tactical stance activation i actually have mine on off i just had that on since i was doing a challenge tactical stance really never helps you in the game same with dolphin diving it doesn't help you whatsoever and that little bit of a delay actually just doesn't help you so you know just have that on off and then the other one slide only interact slash reload behavior so if you're playing warzone you want to have it on prioritize interact this is going to make it so you can loot faster if you're on multiplayer you usually wanted to have it on tap to reload the times where you want prioritize interact on is if you're trying to close the doors a little bit faster you want to do a door play that's when prioritize interact helps but overall tap to reload is what most pro players run i wish we had like settings for like zombies multiplayer and warzone like it would just change based off the mode because then for warzone by default would have prioritize interact for multiplayer would have it on tap to reload but whenever i switch i always gotta switch it and it's super annoying armor play behavior this is a warzone setting have that on apply all ads stick swap off backpack control directional buttons depleted ammo weapon switch on uh quick c4 detonation grouped a lot of these stuff doesn't matter so press independent this one's actually pretty cool this one make it so if it's on paired you can click like say you have a kimbo you can just pull down your right trigger and it'll fire the left one at the same time as the right one you can do independent so then when you pull down on that right trigger only fires the right one then you pull the left trigger fires the left one doesn't really matter sometimes i like it on paired sometimes i like it on independent vehicle behaviors off camera initial position free look lean out activation melee uh, toggle off off hold that's going to wrap it up for the controller settings now over whoa for the display settings, since I am a streamer, I need to use my mouse and other monitors a lot, so I have mine on full screen borderless, although if you do have it on full screen exclusive, you will have less input lag, and that's going to be very helpful for you. Display monitors, display adapter, is just monitor and stuff specific. All these things are all specific, so I don't think I really need to show you guys too much. You can just go through and copy all of these. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I, I will be happy to answer those. Graphic preset, custom, render resolution, 100. On some games, you would need like 110 or or maybe you'd play on 97 or something but for this game just have it on 100 dynamic resolution off upscale slash sharpening fidelity is game changer when you don't have this on visibility is insanely bad on this game it still isn't that good on this game but when you add fidelity it makes it so much better a lot of play, play a lot of people will use it like 50 to 100 for me i like 100 just go into a game and adjust it to your liking path tracing ray reconstruction off vram vram scale target make sure yours is on 90 because i'm streaming 
multitasking a lot. I have mine on 80. Variable rate shading on. For the texture resolution, in the past, I would always have it on low because we want to maximize our FPS. We don't really need the game to look that good if you're trying to do that, if you're trying to do very well. But since visibility in this game isn't that good, when you have it on low, it actually makes it very difficult to see the enemies. A lot of the time, you're shooting on like a tan pixel with a tan background. And so when you have it on normal, it's actually a lot easier to see the enemies. Sometimes when I am streaming, though, just to make my stream look better, I have it on high. Texture filter, anastrophic, low depth of field. Very crucial. Make sure this is on off. Detail quality level low. Particle resolution, very low. Bullet impacts on. Doesn't really matter, though. Persistent effects off. Shader quality. So this one, I was going to have it on low. But if you look at that right image, you actually can see that you can see more of the map when you have like a better shadow. When you have the worst shadows, there's like more dark spots. And so it's a little bit easier to see the enemies when the shader quality is on high. On demand texture streaming off. Local texture streaming quality normal. Shadow quality normal. This one just makes it so it's a little bit easier to see like the enemy shadow or kind of just, you know, know what the shadows are. Screen space shadows off. If you want your gold camo to look good, make sure that's on high or just any camo in the game. And then ambient inclusion off. Screen space reflections. Again, if you want your camos to look good, make sure that's on high. And that's what I'm going to do for like thumbnails and things. Static reflection quality low. Tessellation off. Volumetric quality low. If you have the volumetric quality like higher, you can see that there's a little bit of haze in the air, make it more realistic. But if you're trying to see the enemies the best, you don't really want any of that. Deferred physics quality off. Weather grid volumes off. Water quality on off. Now let's go over to the view settings. So for the view, field of view, if you're playing Warzone, I would play like 110 to 120. Multiplayer, you don't really like we're not on a huge map. We're on like a smaller area. So you don't need to see as much and you're going to have way more close quarters engagements. And the farther, like the higher you have your FOV, yes, you can see more, but all the objects are going to be tinier. So then the enemies are going to be tinier, making it harder to hit your shots, which is why a lot of the pros actually play on like 90 to 100. I know some of them play on like 110 or 105. Really is personal preference. For me, I like 107, but a lot of the time I'll play on 105. Again, this is just, uh, you know, if you're on multiplayer, have it a little bit lower. If you're playing Warzone, it doesn't really matter. You can max it out. ADS field of view, make sure that's on affected. Weapon field of view, why? This just makes it so you can see more of your screen. Third person field of view, 90. Vehicle field of view, wide. World motion blur and weapon motion blur. By default, these are on on. I don't know why. Like if I was new to the game, a casual, and I saw my screen and gun blurring, I wouldn't play the game anymore. And so I feel like by default, these should be on off, but they're not. So make sure that's on off. Film grain zero. By default, that's like 0.25. I don't know why. And then first person, third person, least, least, third person, ADS game perspective. Um, So this one will make it so if you get flash banged, instead of having your whole screen turn white, you can make it so it turns black. But I always think my monitor turns off or something since that actually does happen sometimes. So I just like to have it on default. And then now for the audio settings. So I'm going to have mine on headphones by default. I mean, for some reason, whenever I reload my game, it switches my setting to home theater. Same with my FOV. It switches it to like 110. Super annoying. I don't know why it does that. And so to make sure it's on headphones for the speakers, headphone, this is just, uh, you know, computer specific speaker alpha. I have mine on stereo master game volume 80 gameplay music volume zero war tracks volume. I think that's only like uncertain. Oh, that's when you're driving vehicles. I have mine on 100 cinematic music volume zero effects volume. You actually want that on 90. You don't want it too loud. Dialogue volume is pretty helpful because sometimes you're like your character will calm something that's actually helpful. So I like to have it on 50 and then for the voice chat on game voice channel all lobby all this stuff doesn't really matter so you can have it off on um push the yeah this stuff does not matter whatsoever but if you want you can copy all these things and then so that's going to wrap it up for the audio settings now let's go over to the interface settings which the interface is very important a lot of people don't realize how important it is subtitles i have mine on default actually yeah yeah yeah. default makes it so it's only in the campaign subtitle size default zero zero default default color customization this is where things get very important so on here you want to make sure it's on custom now if you didn't know you can click on each color then you can increase the saturation and the brightness and you can customize the color for me i want everything to be very vibrant so i just maxed out the saturation and maxed out the brightness then you just want to apply a color you can change these to whatever you want so for like the enemy i know some players like some uh, content creators will have it on yellow because the human actually reacts to yellow like that's the fastest reacting color so if you have the enemies on yellow you can have a better reaction time but a lot of things in this game are yellow and i feel like yellow blends in so that's why i just like red and then i just max out saturation and the brightness just make sure you apply the color and do that for each one and then for the color filter make sure that's on filter 2 color filter target both world color intensity 100 and same with the in interface color intensity make 
picture that's on 100 hud bounds this is going to make it so if you make it towards the center as much as possible it's going to make it so the mini map is closer to the center so then when you want to check out your mini map you don't need to look over to the top left corner you can just look to like this corner over there doesn't seem like a big difference but it actually is it just you know any little bit of thing that helps you actually helps you a lot in call of these since it's so fast paced mini map shape make sure that's on square you can see more of the mini map mini map rotation on horizontal compass off crosshairs on oh and then on here oh yeah um yeah yeah so center dot i like to have that on this is what i mean about the centering that white dot in the center will help you center because you want to put that where an enemy could be so then you can just ads and start to fire for me i like it on larger i know some older people like to have it on largest just because you know their eyes aren't as good the default one is super tiny so i just like it on larger hip marker visuals on damage base hip markers on player names abbreviated you don't need to see like the clan tag and the name so i just have it on the name you want to make sure you have at least the name though because that dot isn't the easiest to see in-game text chat on vehicle hud and prompts fade after 10 seconds elementary yeah, all this stuff doesn't matter whatsoever so i think that is going to wrap it up for this video let me know in the comments your kd and i hope this video is helpful and i'll see you in the next deuces